John, I am super excited about our first guest tonight. Mm -hmm. Guy does not mm -hmm. do late night TV. He is a two time Oscar winning actor, humanitarian, and experiential journalist. Please welcome the great Sean Penn. Are you good? Are you good with me calling you the great Sean Penn? I don't call every guest the great. They got to earn it. But you really are one of our greatest actors. Are you good with being called great? I, th I think it's an affirmation of your discernment. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to warn my producers. I might need a thesaurus for this interview. <laughs> well, Sean Penn, thanks for being here. You like? When's the last time you did a late night show? I don't remember. You don't remember. No. So it could no. be last week, or, or you just been a long time. You don't remember. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Well, thanks for being here. It's an honor to have you. It's an honor to be here. All right. Um, you are here for a purpose, though. This is not just hangout time. Right. All okay. right. You are here because you have a relationship to a book that's coming out. Correct. Okay. Uh, the book is called, and it's, it might take me a second to describe it here. Do you want to jump in and describe what I'm holding up here? The book is called. Bob Honey, who just do stuff. Okay, now, one might think that you're here because you wrote it. Right now, no. You did not write it. No, this is this is sort of an interesting thing. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> or or it'll be my last time on late night. No, TV. not at all, not at all. Uh, There's a lot of stuff we can talk about. Yeah. Uh, no, what happened is in 1979, I went to this just as a kid. I went to this writers' conference in Key West, Florida, and. Uh, this, this writer, James Leo Hur Hurley, he was doing a seminar, and I went to that. And after I was going back to my room, I had driven down there from Los Angeles. How old were you in 1979? I was 19. Okay, dig it. And, uh, and, and, and you could drink on the East Coast at that time at 18, so it was a good place to come from in Los Angeles. In Key West, you can drink anytime you want. You can do anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So I went down to the Passion Pit Bar at the Lavender Fawn. That sounds made up. Go ahead. And... <laughs> This is all going to sound made up. Okay. This is real. Listen, it's kind of like what we were just watching in the debates last night. Uh, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the fact checkers. I want to pull in a fact. Fact checking this. All right, go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, so Passion Pit so, Bar at yeah. the Fandango Grill. And the, it, it, at the at Lavender Fawn, the Passion Pit. Okay. And, and there was a, uh, a terrible piece of commercial art. It was a, a fiberglass, full size. A uh, bar patron with a glass sitting in a seat. And I wondered at the time looking at it, I mean, a terrible uh, piece of art. And I wondered at the time looking at it, you know, when the place was crowded, were people frustrated that this piece of art was permanently embedded in that seat? And, <laughs> you know, maybe a date had to be on the other side of it. And, and then I realized that, back to first thinking that maybe it was the alcohol, but this was not a commercial piece of art. It was a human being with very little capacity for animation. So there was actually a man sitting there. It was a man. That you thought was a hideous piece of art. Which, which was a fascinating thing. So I went and I sidled up next to him. We ended up in conversation that I quickly had to translate from lyrics to melody because I didn't understand a word of what he was saying, though it sounded like uh, intelligent English. He was speaking a lot of uh, acronyms and some in metaphor, slangs, uh, scientific terms. In either case, my mother was making greeting cards that were kind of interesting at the time, and I had brought that up in small talk. He got fascinated by that, and I kind of threw her under the bus because I wanted to get away from the conversation by giving him her address, and he could. <laughs> He could correspond. You, just were, you were just pimping out your mom's address to a guy, so he would stop talking to you, even though you approached him. Yeah, I've been using this forever. Yeah, I approached Yeah, I approached him. Then I thought, I'd like to. I'd like. It's fascinating, but I need. I can't be immediately responsive to this. I need to think about what this guy is saying. So anyway, I, n I never hear from him again. But my mother had corresponded with him. <laughs> Since 1979. No, then. 
and she sold them about 500 greeting cards. Did your mom still make the greeting cards? No, nah, she stopped with the greeting card thing. Too okay. many strangers asking for them. I met someone. <laughs> but anyway, so what happened then is, uh, like, May this year, my mother called and said that a manila envelope, you know, some, like, fan mail got to her address. I said, throw it away. And she says, well, it sounds like somebody I remember. It's somebody, Pappy Pariah. And I remembered that name. Right, it's on the, it's on the book right here. What... <laughs> What, what, what came in this envelope... Pappy Pariah, written by Pappy Pariah. Right. And what came in the envelope was this manuscript with a, a dedication to me saying that he wanted me to be the executor of it. Is he dead? Well, this is what's interesting. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the return address was a lawyer's address in the Cayman Islands. So then what happened is that Audible, you know, who do the kind of book on tape thing with Amazon. There, sure, 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 yeah, digital, they, digital books, yeah. They came into this thing, and he had wanted me to try to get it, you know, heard before the election. And they came in great, and, and it's kind well, it's of... That's a quick way to publish. You don't have to actually print it. You just do an audio book and go Yeah, and it's fast. the new age of literature, because you want people to have information. I clearly want people to have this information, because what I read was something that I felt was important for people to hear now. Mm -hmm. He demanded it be before the election. It's, uh, it's, I read the book, too. Yeah. I got a similar, I got a phone call in the middle of the night on the first day of my vacation in August, and it was like a gravelly voice, Los Angeles phone number. Somebody said, would you read this book? Right. And I said, I'd love, I'd love to, Sean. And, <laughs> and, and he goes, I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know who you're talking about. And so I read the book, yeah. and it is, it is, uh, it's like a, a bit of a mystery, something of a thriller. The main character, Bob Honey, who do, who just do stuff, yeah. might be a murderer, might be an assassin, might be CIA, might be insane. Yeah, might I, be one of our greatest living actors. But, no, no. Is there anything? Is any of this based on? Does, did Pappy Pariah know you well enough? through your mother's letters that any of this reflects your own life, Sean Penn? I like to think that it will reflect everybody's life or I wouldn't have wanted to share it, but it is. But there, not everybody, because this character also uh, has spent time like in the Middle East. This character has also spent time with drug lords who are fascinated by escape tunnels. <laughs> there are certain things that you might relate to of this main character. Well, there's no question I relate to a lot of it. Uh, 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 well, I want to get into some yeah. of the things in your life that might be relevant to this book when we come back, but we've got to serve some corporate masters. Are you down with that? Yeah, which is what the book is largely about, the corporate okay, masters. So let's hit uh, it. Well, uh, please uh, bow down to our corporate masters, and we'll be right back with more Sean Penn. <laughs>